Hi, my name is Shilin Patel and I'm from Deakin University. I'm also a developer for the Internet to Grouper project. This is the admin track of the Grouper training. In this video, I'll be talking about the subject API, and this is part four. Here are the topics that I'll be covering. In part one, I gave an introduction to the subject API and talked about the various source adapters. In part two, I did a demo of the JNDI source adapter and talked about batching and paging. In part three, I talked about virtual attributes and internal attributes. In this part, I'll be talking about member sorting and searching, how to build your own source adapter, and finally, a feature in Grouper that allows you to filter and modify subject data. So the first topic is member sorting and searching. The Grouper underscore members table contains additional columns to allow searching and sorting without resolving all subjects and sources. So for instance, if you want to search for a member in a group that has, say, 100,000 members, you don't want to have to resolve all 100,000 members and see if each individually matched the search criteria. Or you don't want to have to perform that search on your sources, which may result in a lot of results, and then see which, if any of them, are in the group. Also, if you want to sort in your paging, you don't again want to have to resolve everybody and then sort and then show the first page. With the additional columns in Grouper, you can store the attributes that you would want used for sorting and searching. So that way, Grouper can just do database joining and doesn't have to go to the source to resolve everybody in the group. There are five columns in the Grouper underscore members table that are used for sorting and five other columns that are used for searching. Different search columns exist since each one may contain different data based on privacy. So for example, some users may be able to search using a column that has some additional information that may be sensitive, while, users, uh, while most other users would be using a different column that only has public data. There are different sort columns um, because that allows sorting using different attributes. The sort columns are expected to have one attribute in each column. The search columns are expected to have multiple attributes that are comma-separated based on the search strings entered by users that should match the member. You can use virtual attributes to build uh, the value used for the search column and mark them as virtual attributes and mark the virtual attributes as uh, internal so that they don't get displayed in the UI. These columns are updated whenever a subject is resolved by ID or identifier or when running the unresolvable subject deletion utility. You can configure which users can access which sort and search column uh, using configuration in the grouper.properties file. By default, all users can access all columns, uh, but here's an example of how you can limit that. The first example uh, limits access to sort column zero to members of the group at C colon some group. The second example limits access to sort column one to wheel members. And the third example limits access to search column zero to members of the group at C colon some group. When performing queries on the Grouper API methods that support this, if a particular sort or search index is not specified, then the default is used. You can configure the default ones to use in the grouper.properties file as well, um, and this slide has an example of that. Note that both of these values can be commonly separated with multiple index values. The reason for that is because if the user doesn't have access to the first one, then the second one would be tried and so forth. So when you configure sort and search columns, you have to make sure that it makes sense with all of your subject sources. So here's a table that shows an example when considering a person source and the internal grouper source used for groups. In the end, your desire may be that sort column 0 is used to sort by name, sort column 1 is used to sort by last name, sort column 2 is used to sort by net ID, search column 0 is for privileged users only, and search column 1 is for everybody else. So in this example, sort column 0 would have the display name for people and the display extension for groups. So if you're sorting a group that contains both people and other groups as members, it'll sort correctly since both types of members would have the appropriate name attribute populated. The other two sort columns only apply to people. Search column 0 has more data uh, than search column 1 in case you want to add additional data in column 0 that shouldn't be usable by people. Uh, by some people. Now I'll show a quick example of how the default sorting and searching is configured in the JNDI uh, source adapter and how you can modify it. 
This is configured in the sources.xml file. The sorting and searching for the group source is also configured there. Though the sorting and searching for internal grouper subjects and external subjects are configured in the grouper.properties file since those sources aren't part of the sources.xml file. So I'm going to open up the sources.xml file. Uh, this sources.xml file is already pre-configured based off of uh, the previous tutorials on the subject API. I'm going to find the configuration for the JNDI source adapter, uh, which I had configured to talk to my um, LDAP instance. Um, here, first of all, I'll mention uh, that the name attribute being used is the display name attribute in LDAP. Also, I'll scroll down a bit and mention that the way that the searching works um, depends on or takes into account both the UID attribute and the CN attribute. So now I'll, I'll show how the member sorting and searching is actually configured. Um, and that configuration is basically done right here. So this first part here uh, mentions that sort attribute 0 uses the CN attribute. Um, and you could have up to five of these. So you can have sort attribute 0, sort attribute 1, 2, 3, and 4. Um, here, since the name attribute that I'm using is display name, I would likely want this to also be the display name uh, for consistency. Here, the search attribute 0 um, is based off of the attribute search attribute 0. Um, and search attribute 0 is uh, defined as a virtual attribute right here. And again, you can have up to five of these. So search attribute 0, search attribute 1, 2, 3, and 4. Um, so in, in part 3, I talked about how virtual attributes are configured. Um, and here's an example of how to do that. Um, so here, search attribute 0 is based off of um, a few different attributes that are comma separated. So the first of these is the UID attribute. Since it could be a multi-valid attribute, it would end up uh, being comma separated in itself. Uh, then followed by a comma. Then the CN attribute, which again, since it could be multi-valued, um, it would be separated by commas. Um, and then there's this other attribute here that's example edu reg ID, uh, which I don't have, so I would probably want to delete that. And so here, since um, the searching that's being done uh, above uh, takes into account the UID attribute and the CN attribute, I've also specified the same attributes here, UID and CN. Again, so the searching is consistent, whether it's done using the member attributes or done using the, um, the source. And since this is an attribute that I wouldn't want displayed anywhere, um, including the UI, by default it's marked as an internal attribute. So if I go back to the top of the file and go down to where uh, the source adapter for groups um, is configured, uh, which is right here, uh, you can see that it also takes into um, account sort attribute and search attribute. Uh, so here, again, sort attribute 0 uses the display extension of groups. Search attribute 0 uses the attribute search attribute 0, which is defined as a virtual attribute, which takes into account the group name, the group display name, and the group alternate name. And search attribute 0 is defined as an internal attribute. If I go to the grouper.properties file, um, here you can see that the internal source adapter, the one that's used for uh, the grouper sysadmin user and the every entity user, um, has its search and sort attributes configured here. Um, and here it's done using um, expression language. So the, the search attribute 0 um, includes the subject name and the subject ID, and the sort attribute 0 um, includes the subject name. 
So that was a demo of configuring member searching and sorting. The next topic is about building your own source adapter. I'll cover this very briefly in case you would want to do this. However, in most cases, if your subject source is an LDAP directory or a relational database, you should be able to use the ones that already come with the subject API. But for instance, if you have a subject source that needs to be accessed through some API, this could be an option. Basically, what you would want to do is implement the source interface or extend the base source adapter class, which would be the recommended way to go. And then if you needed to, you could also implement the subject interface, although you should probably see if the subject impl class already uh, meets your needs, and if not, you could extend that. That class is fairly generic and also takes uh, care of virtual attributes. It's used by both JDBC source adapters that come with Grouper, and it's also extended by the JNDI source adapter. You can, and you can still keep your configuration in the sources.xml file. The next topic is subject filter and attribute decorator. These aren't actually part of the subject API, but they're related to subjects, so I'm covering them here. So first of all, to take advantage of these features, what you'd want to do is implement the subject customizer interface or extend the subject customizer base class, uh, which would be recommended. In the grouper.properties file, you would configure your class as shown on the slide. Uh, so first I'll describe what the subject filtering is. It basically allows you to secure attribute release, uh, for instance, to take into account FERPA or other privacy-related policies that you have at your institution. Whenever a subject is resolved from your sources, you would be able to get access to those subject objects and modify them before they get displayed or used anywhere. You can edit, remove, or add subject attributes, for instance. To take advantage of this feature, you would extend the filter subjects method. This method has three parameters. The first is the grouper session, which tells you who the caller is. The second is a set of subjects that were just resolved. And the last is a stem name, in case this is a find subjects and stem call. So since you know who the caller is, based on the caller, you can make adjustments to the subject data. Uh, you may, for instance, perform a query in Grouper to see if the caller is a privileged uh, user based off of a group. If not, then perhaps subjects that are students who have invoked FERPA should have their attributes, um, including their name, changed to unlisted in the subject object. So this may require additional queries, um, and if that's the case, you should try to limit the number of queries you make, um, hopefully to no more than one. Your method would get called a lot, so it's important to make sure it performs well. I've included a link to the wiki page for this feature, which contains a few examples. You can take a look at it to give you ideas of how you can batch queries. At Duke, this is a feature that I'm particularly interested in using soon. Our subject source is an LDAP directory. Uh, I would probably configure some additional internal attributes to retrieve some attributes of subjects in LDAP to indicate whether the subjects have privacy invoked or not. Then when I implement this method, I would possibly change their name to unlisted if the person has invoked privacy and the caller is not a privileged user. The next part of this is the attribute decorator. This is mainly currently used in Grouper Web Services. This allows clients to make attribute requests that are not necessarily configured in the subject API configuration. Your method can verify that the caller is allowed to see the data run queries to retrieve the data, and then add the attributes to the subjects. One example of where this may be useful is if the requested attribute is not in your subject source. Your method can retrieve the attribute from another location and add it to the subject data. To do this, you would extend the decorate subjects method. The parameters of the method include the group procession to allow you to know who the caller is, the subjects, and the attributes being requested. So that's all for this tutorial. You can click on the quiz link in the video description to reinforce your knowledge of the subject API. And here are some links you can visit uh, for more information. Thanks.